What's up guys, MTG Matt for you, back with another video for Kamigawa Neon Dynasty Standard. And I'm very excited to share today's stack with you, which is a mid-range, mid-range control Azorius deck featuring the reality chip. And this is the first time that I've used this card and I actually liked this card right away in the previews, but I wasn't sure if it was playable at all. So I tried it out and the results were really, really nice. So let's read this card together. Reality Ship is a blue creature. For one and a blue, you get a 0-4 legendary artifact creature, Equipment Jellyfish. So it's got the reconfigure mechanic, which lets you attach the creature to another creature. It becomes an equipment and then gets a uh, different effect, right? So the Reality Ship has the following properties. First of all, you may look at the top card of your library at any time. So this is true for just reality ship being a creature. You have this effect even without the equipment part. But then, as long as the reality ship is attached to a creature, you may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. So obviously the second line of text, or that second paragraph of text, is a very, very powerful effect and, well, the thing is, or like the thing I learned about magic is like whenever a card has a whenever a card has a very powerful effect written on it, right? Even though it may seem unplayable at first, the card is usually worth a second look or like a little bit of testing to figure out is the card real playable and because if you can make it playable, then you get this strong effect, right? It pays off and the relationship does have a real strong effect. So you know, playing lands from top of the library and playing spells is means that every time you do it, you essentially draw a card, right? Which is real, real cool. So I started with this creature in mind and tested around a little bit. And I was also thinking about the meta right now. And the meta right now is very grindy. It's very board centric, right? You want to control the board. And it's really about like who can put more stuff on the board and just overwhelm the opponent. And this way, you know, grind the opponent out. So the reality chips really fits that well, right? Because we can play lands from top for our deck and play spells. This adds to the grinding out game style, right? And um, also, if we want to enable the reality chip, we want to have creatures on the board. So we can uh, reconfigure it to some creatures. So I started with the reality chip and I figured out, well, what's a good way to make sure we always have a creature on the board to attach it to? The easiest way is, of course, four copies of Wedding Announcement, right? Which is this enchantment, which is everywhere in the meta right now. It produces tokens, and eventually you get an Anthem. Also, if you attack with two or more creatures in your turn, you draw a card instead of making a token. So Wedding Announcement can make sure they will have some random 1-1 token lying around that we can attach the reality chip to, to benefit from its powerful effect. And then, secondly... Um, the thing about reality chip is you pay two to play it and then you pay another three to equip it, right? However, the reality chip is an artifact and a reconfigure is an activated ability, which means the reconfigure does get reduced by Tazeret's static ability, which says the first activated ability of an artifact you activate each turn costs two less to activate. So Tazeret, obviously, like an Azorius artifact deck was one of the first decks I played in new expansion and I absolutely love Tethered right away because it gives you so much value because of the static ability especially if you combine it with Reckon or Bankbuster right because then the Bankbuster can draw you a card for free every turn because activated ability gets reduced by two. Well now we can also use not only Bankbuster's activated ability but also the activated ability of the reality chip which means we can reconfigure for just one blue mana. And if you combine all these factors, right, uh, what's happening is that, well, you know, we get creatures for free on the board with wedding announcements, so we have something that we can attach the reality chip to. And then if you want to do it, if we have a 1-1 one, one or any board, we can pay 2 mana to play the reality chip and another blue mana to attach it to a token. And then we can just play... <laughs> Uh, lands from top of our deck, spells from top of our deck, which is insanely good. And the best part is, right, if your opponent removes the token or has a board wipe, the reality chips comes back as a creature and it's still on the board. So 
I really like this card. I think it's really cool in the shell. And I really want to, to showcase it in this deck. So that's the basic, the, the main idea behind the stack. And then the rest of the deck is mostly what we already know about um, these Azurius artifact control decks. So we got four copies of Portable Hole that can exile any non permanent with mana value two or less, which is extremely relevant in the meta right now because uh, people started playing this only called Anvil, Ragdos Sacrifice deck right now, where you have only called Anvil. Let's actually get in here real quick. Oni, 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 Oni called Anvil, right? It's this two mana artifact that lets you sacrifice creatures, you drain out your opponent, and also makes these construct tokens. So, Portable Hole is really good against those decks, so uh, like the importance of Portable Hole just increased with the meta shifting more towards uh, this Ragdos Sacrifice style of deck. And obviously Portable Hole also gets rid of tokens which are everywhere in the meta, uh, can get rid of opponents, recordness, bankbusters, and it's also really good against the Celestian Shamans deck because those have a lot of um, creatures that are mana value 2 or less. Then we got four copies of Moosnap Prototype, which can um, produce mana for us. And obviously it's got this nice channel ability for five mana, where you can put target null and permanent in the top or bottom of uh, someone's library, right? Then since we got all these artifacts, we got three copies of Disruption Protocol, which lets, lets us counter target spell for just two blue mana, a mana if you can also tap an artifact we control, or we just pay three mana for a straight up cancel, right, which is occasionally also just fine. Four copies of Ragnar Bankbuster, obviously, as I said, combines really, really well with Tezzeret, and just by itself a really, really nice um, artifact that can draw us cards and also presents a threat on the board, especially um, once wedding announcement flips and provides us an anthem. Then, as I said, four copies of Tezzeret, Artifact, um, lots of artifact synergies, draws us cards, um, also very relevant in the stack. The game plan with the stack is that we actually get a hold on the board with Wedding Announcement and we have card advantage through the reality chip and so forth. And then when the time is right, we really don't want to start, well, killing our opponents. So the minus two making, let's say, a uh, Moonsnap prototype or a portable whore into a 4 4 is really, really good to make sure that you close out the game. Then, since we have all these creatures on the board, I got two copies of the Wandering Emperor. You know, we can um, put one encounters on stuff, create more tokens, right? Which is, again, really nice with the reality chip. Or we can exile target type creature, also at instant speed, gain two life. Really, really nice in this deck. So, a copy of the fairy who's lost the sunset. Um, well, first of all, it's just generically good in a artifact centric deck, right, because Teferi can untap artifacts, untap lands and so forth. But the main reason I put it in here is actually those only called um, decks that I was talking about. Uh, and Teferi can gain us life and that can be super relevant against those Rack the Sacrifice deck that just want to drain you out with only called Anvil and uh, the Meat Hook Massacre. Teferi makes sure that we have at least one card in our deck that can just gain us two life every turn and this can be really relevant to surviving uh, until we you know control the board and then eventually win uh, three copies of doomscar as board wipe right um, we tend to have a real good grip on the board with all those portable holes and wedding announcements but from time to time you just want to you know wipe out the board um, to reset it and then start over again. So three copies of Doomscar. And finally, let's put it in here. We got three copies of Mirror Shell Crab, which is also an artifact. It's got Ward 3, 7 mana, 5, 7. But then we mainly run it for the channel ability. Three mana discarded. <coughs> we counter target spell or ability unless its controller pays three. So this can act as a counter spell also against abilities, which is really, really neat. And, um, you know, late in the game we might just play this as a 7 mana 5 7. And also, since this is an artifact, if we plus Tazeret to draw two cards, we can discard it as our artifact on the ability, right? Because Tazeret says draw two cards, then discard two cards unless you discard an artifact card. 
So having Mirishol Crabs in the deck instead of other counter spells has just some more synergy there. If we take a look at the land base, um, let's actually move everything here. So taking a look at land base, we got two Iganjo Seed of the Empire. Three Hall of Stone Giants obviously adds to our win conditions. A thin copy of Odavara Soaring Sitter. I do like this channel land, but I, my experience with it has been that one copy is usually enough. Um, four copies of Desert Beach, four Handshake Pathways, two Field of Ruins against uh, enemy manlands. And then we got a thin copy of Rose at Valley Quarry, which taps for a colorless mana. But then we can also pay two. Sacrifice it to do a card if you control an artifact and or and draw a card if you control an enchantment Now obviously we will always have artifacts on the board with this deck But since we also got four copies of wedding announcement It's reasonable to assume that we will also have an enchantment and in this case it is just a land that you know can draw us two cards if we need it So that's really, really neat all in all um, had a lot of fun playing this deck especially checking out reality chip um, I highly recommend that you check it out that you check it out too because I do think that this card is very playable in combination with Terrazoret So hope you guys enjoyed the video and I see you guys soon Okay Got a bang buster into a crab I think I don't know maybe we should mulligan for portable horse or something like that Roadside Relic Query. Cleric deck cuts by our Bankbuster. Hmm. Just pass, we might counter something with the mirror for a crab. Yeah, let's counter that. We use the mirror for a crab here first, right? Because this only works when opponent can't pay for it, and the rupture protocol always works. Go tether it here. Draw to well appreciates a technocratic future just as I do. Could also make Bangbuster into a 4-4. Four four. So if we okay, so if we turn this into a 4-4, four four, and opponent does not have creature removal, which he might have, right? Um then we can just block the 1-1 one one or trade with the cleric. Hmm. But if he does have creature removal, we draw a card. Here's the thing, I think that... <laughs> My toys will keep you busy. I think the thing is, um, like, as long as he plays a creature, he would be able to kill Tezzeret, right? Yeah. Okay, let's just draw a card here, then. So I think that was the correct call right there. I hope you're okay, proud. Scar. I think what we want to do here is we pass and I want to hold open counter spell and draw a card and draw a card with uh, the bank buster and the next turn we just board wipe Lock, we draw a card. Okay, wedding announcement is nice. 
Yeah, we could have foretold the Doomscar, obviously. But... Could have foretold the Doomscar, but I wanted to have a counter spell open there. Let's play the prototype. Okay, so... Good news is we got a wedding announcement, we got a portable hole, we also got a counter spell, and next turn we'll also activate Hall of Storm Giants. Aura is a problem, but we can just go double announcement here to start building a board. It's the power of wedding announcement. I don't want to block here. If I block, I'm on a trade. And we can just portable hold the boys. So for matchups like these, Teferi is gonna be really nice, right? Because... Um... Because Teferi can gain us some life back. Also what's cool is we can block with the hall if needed and we can draw two cards with roadside reliquary since we have an artifact and enchantment on the board. Really? Um, so one of them would die and would get something back. I actually don't want that to happen. Okay, let's draw two cards. Luckily we got the Rally Query. Ooh, Wandering Emperor is sick. That's pretty good. Ooh. Oh, these are some good draws. I did chip. And we just chill. We have the Emperor. The Emperor can also gain us some life. Wait, we have... Five, we got six mana available. That's fine. And now we actually have some threats on the board. I might exile this Luminous Phantom when it attacks. Okay. Bone gets a voice back, which is pretty useless for him right now. I think I want to get rid of that, just gain some life. Yeah, that's, coming that's how it's done. Okay. Really good starting hand. Really, really good. Got a prototype, turn to Bankbuster. Man, I really wonder how the stack is going to perform, or like how the stack is going to evolve once we reach the end of the year with Dominaria United and especially the Brothers War, which is sure to have, you know, a bunch of artifacts and probably more artifact synergies. Okay, we can just. Snatch the Snatcherous with a portable hole. And I guess we second make a second white mana. For the Emperor. Let's pass and we're gonna draw a card here with the Bangbuster. Okay, 
probably gonna exile the hole or the bank boss. He's gonna exile the hole. Okay. Tether is nice. Very nice. Now, this is Naya, which means it's probably the rune stack. So the question is if you play a Tetheret, do you think it's it will survive? It might die. It might actually die. Hmm. So maybe it's better to play the Emperor. Then again, actually, it's, I think it's probably worth it to plus one Tethered to, you know, look through this deck here. And some more cards. Yeah, I think that's worth it. And if it survives, you're obviously in very good shape. Okay. Okay, so Boseju is exile, which means he can't use the channel ability. And it looks like the Tetheret is going to live. Man, I love this plane soccer, it's so good. It's so good. Just the synergy with Bankbuster is fantastic. Let's draw some more cards. Drop this prototype. Mm. So is there a reason to play a desert beach instead of a hall? Not really. So this would give us 6 mana in total, but then we wouldn't be able to activate bank bus. So I think we just play the hall. And uh... We leave mana open for the Wandering Emperor. Also, we can make a 1-1 one -one pilot, right, with uh, the Bankbuster, so that's good. Man, I gotta say, ever since I plotted, started playing MTG Arena, which was... Uh, I started playing MTG Arena right before War of the Spark came out. This has probably been the best standard format I've ever played. Okay, this is only going face, which means... Just gonna ignore this. And then we draw a car with Bangbuster, make a pilot. Actually, I'm not going to do that because... Hmm... Well... Yeah, we're gonna do that. Let's do it. I think the idea here is... Play Deserted Beach, now we got 7 mana available. Which means we can activate the Hall. Hall of Storm Giants. I actually want to keep this Bank Buster, so... Let's discard some lands. Let's discard a hall and kind of want to keep roadside reliquary. For the card draw and I ganjo for removing something, so let's drop these two. Remember your training. Guess let's just chill.
So next turn we will probably probably want a board wipe. We got four mana left, which is obviously a lot more with the naturalist. Question is if he finds more trample damage. Obviously he's already outscaling our hall. Oh wait, this already has trample. Okay, so if we can give this haste, this would be problematic. Can obviously block with the bankbuster. Mm. Yeah, I might have not been cautious enough here. Let's see if, if we can survive this. Okay, that's not a haste rune, that's good. Okay, he didn't find a haste rune, that's really good. So if we crew the bank buster and block one, right? It's got four toughness, which means 60 damage go through. I think that I think that's better than trading away the all for nothing. Doesn't really matter. We got on to free life, but we still live. And I'm actually gonna exile this Kami so it's not going to your opponent's hand. Also gain two life, which is nice. Sad to see you go. Ah, uh, the reality is really good, so let's just discard some lands, let's discard the planes. And the pathway? I actually like some more blue mana. Let's get rid of the reliquary. I think soon we won't be having any pr mana problems anymore. Okay, play a land. It's for blue mana. So I could play a bankbuster here or hold open the mana for against the haster. But I think if he has a haster, we're dead either way, right? I think let's play the bankbuster. We haven't activated an artifact yet this turn. Okay, now we have to hope that he doesn't, he can find a creature and the haste rune. Okay, that's not cool. Okay. That's fine. That's okay. But yeah, now we're at this turning point, right, where um, we we held control over the board, right? And now we're gonna go off because we have the Tetherit Emblem, so we're gonna draw Your insane amount of cards. My future. So I wonder if I should Doomscar here. Now I think All we, we just make a 4-4. Four, four. I think that's the now best option. Die. Make a 4-4, four, four, hold open my Ganjo. Blocker. A technocratic future, just as I do. I made this one especially for you. Should we keep the prototype in hand? I think I'm gonna keep the prototype. I 
I'd rather keep this as a backup to, you know, bounce something. Also, we can use the prototype to tap this treasure, which means we would draw two cards from Tether's emblem. And let's not forget he has the Slayer of the Hydra, so it would be nice to find a Field of Ruin. But he can only make this a 5-5, five five, so if you block with the prototype, um, we can Aganju and also kill the Lair. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, get rid of the Slayer. So we use this to produce Vanna, draw two cards. And then we Iganjo. Ooh, portable hole. Fantastic. Um, let's play the prototype. We can empty our hand here. Draw two more cards. Can our I Ganja? Oh, I like the fairy. I like the fairy very much here. Just gains us some life back, draws us some more cards. Untap. Untap. Yeah, I'm just gonna make more 4 4s here. I hope you're proud of you. Meet your killer. And yeah, now we're really in a winning position. Sure, our opponent is at 45 life, but got the hole on the board, so we can start swinging for a 7. We can even increase our card advantage with the reality ship here. And the Pharaoh can, can gain us some life back. And GG, yeah. That was too much. I still didn't get a chance to show off reality chip. Okay, so yeah, this looks good enough. With the prototype and the portable holes, we can guarantee with a wedding announcement, but we already drew our third land. And this deck is performing really well. Okay, with Portable hold the Valky and play a Moonsnap prototype. So now because we got all the we got already our mana base covered, right? We got double white, double blue. If you draw into a tethered, for example, you can play next turn. A Corellic Query is nice. Actually nice. Can let us draw more cards and just play the wedding announcement here. Okay, you want to trade? Ah, now we don't have an enchantment and. And an artifact. I think we still play the reliquary. Just 
chill. Spellbinder, okay. Fine. I mean, we can pay for two mana. We don't have anything better to do right now. My turn. Corruption protocol. That's actually a portable hole here. Get rid of one of these tokens. Yeah, we're really missing the card right now. I mean, we can always sack the Roadside Reliquary if you're really desperate for a card. Oh, Edgar is a good target to counter. That's really good to counter. And we can actually still I Gunjo. Okay, now we're out of cards. The prototype isn't really helping. I think we have to crack the roadside reliquary. That's not that helpful. Man, we're completely out of gas. That's really, it's really rare that this happens with the stack. Get a lull. Children wrench there, aren't I generous? Okay, Teferi can draw us into another card here, that's good. Neither future looks bright for one of us. I guess the Emperor, right? Hmm. Yeah, I guess uh, this is just a matchup where our draws are unfortunate because I mean we do have enough card draw in the deck just that we didn't draw it here. This is hardly my worst defeat. Yeah, that's a little bit too late. But still good to have. Okay, we maybe we can manage to come back here somehow. Okay, the last burn. So what needs to happen is, okay, opponent is out of mana. That's already good. What needs to happen here is we need to top deck a doom scar. Exactly a doom scar. Okay, so. Flash in the Emperor. So this is a virgin damage. We actually can't afford to let these through. So let's exile Edgar. This is what you get for hurting. Then I mean we need a Doomstar. Otherwise we're just dead. It's not a Doomstar, and we're dead. Wow, that was unfortunate. I mean, I guess we can. Make a samurai. We must protect. You can bounce something, get another token. Yeah, this is not looking great. Good minions are loyal and deadly. Tainted adversary. Okay. Again, we need blue scar, and even then. He will just put more spiders on the board. Okay, so we can block this, this. I think we're still dead, right? Are we? Yeah, this is seven damage. Ah! That felt bad. Yeah, we 
ju we just screw that there, it's fine. Okay. That is a sign we have portable hole, gangbuster, find us blue mana. Let's actually start with the prototype because I want to see what our opponent is playing before we use the portable hole. Also, nice thing about this, we can next turn play portable hole and the bankbuster. Dueling rapier, okay. Play a portable hole on this fireball charger. And play the bank buster. Mm. It is worth that reliquary is making hard with our mana. Ooh, what a top deck. Let's go. Let's go. Right on curve. Okay, I think we block. We just take this, right? Okay, now we got the Emperor online. We could also get Tetheret online, but in this situation, I like the Emperor better. Because we can exile the Firelight Shard, which is really nice, so she doesn't get the die trigger. Okay. Oops. <laughs> okay. Pretty devastating here in platinum rank.